Master con men working their magic. They thought there was a lot of gold. Yeah, they thought there was money. Ain't there always. And we're live. Welcome back to part 19 of Marston Mondays, where we free roam with John in Epilogue 2. We are back in Blackwater. I know technically Undead Nightmare is maybe two years in the future, but we just completed the Undead Nightmare commentary, so as far as John's concerned, he's completely done with the zombies and the undead, and he is ready to get back to business as usual. Let's get started. Oh, and disregard this rose gray Arabian, let's consider him a temporary horse. John needed one for another video. We'll swap him out for Rachel. Come on, fella. Hey, you got a problem? Wait. Boy. Need a ride, mister? Checking on Jeremy Gill, we are pretty much done with the legendary fishing challenge. We do have to get the legendary largemouth bass and a legendary steelhead trout. And on the map, we need to go north of Annisburg to the edge of the map, to this tiny island northeast of Brandywine Drop. Moving on. You got this, girl. Over at Annisburg, we can take the train tracks directly there. <laughs> However, we will keep the bolt action handy because there are cougars about. Looking for gold? I go up river. Here's the prospector. He has a sooty buckskin Dutch warm blood. We shall leave him alone for now. We have fishing to do. This is the one. Here we go. Let's get rid of the marker. Very distracting. And we shall use the special river lure. Hooked him. Well done, John.
Here we go. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. And lost him. So close. Not so well done, John. Let's try that again. He is a fighter, but John is stubborn. Well done, John. I understand you are excited, but his harsh language really required at this moment. The legendary steelhead trout, 29 pounds, 8 ounces. Trophy-sized trout are in the waterways around Willard's Rest and prefer special lake and river lures. That is a pretty fish. Let's mail him off. Moving on. Good girl. Back in town, we need to visit the post office. Nice, and there is great light in the Annisburg train station, so John needs to pose for the IG. Link in the description if you'd like to follow. Be seeing you. And there is a crackpot by the gunsmiths. Let's see what he has to say. Good science to see was not tell us. It is good science, and there is bad science, and that is really the point. Machines have done a lot of great things and a lot of bad things. But machines are not the problem. It's the people who use them. Thank you. The whole world is an integrated system, and we are destroying it. Our actions, greed, matter, and science will save us, or it will kill us. For we, this, everything is science, so don't live in ignorance. Okay then, and that is a nice looking fish illustration. Do we have time to read? I think we have time to read. Hopes for the future, damnations and exclamations on science, the skies, waters, and the great swindle. A book by Dr. Malcolm McIntosh, published in Boston, 1891. The dangers of illuminating oils. What is the price of the light created by burning illuminating oils that fills our homes, lights our carriages, and transports us in metal machines? The new invention of the patent motor wagon will result in the death of the creatures of the sea. One day there will be no fish to be found by the fisherman, as he has traveled farther and farther in a machine of death. Learn and weep as the rivers and oceans go black, and nowhere is to be found a drop 
to quench our thirsts. The hills scorched shall burn, the rivers fouled will burn, the sun in the sky will burn our eyes and skin. Experiments and future of electricity. The fire that runs through wires of elements such as copper shall soon come to consume every part of our being. Soon electricity will be required for every part of our lives. It will create visions in front of your eyes. It will be used instead of sexual intercourse. Man will no longer be able to cipher numbers because of the reliance on it. Electricity, not from the skies that sets our trees afire, but the kind made by man, a wonder of the age. Yet it is fire, and it will eventually cause us to burn every living thing to make more of it. A swindle. This is a full and accurate report that every person reading this will be swindled out of considerable wealth. Machines are wonderful, but in the operation of the wrong people, they are the pathway to destruction. Someday these machines will lull us into comfort, such that we lose all common sense, compassion, and human contact, instead preferring the sound of machines. Whispering gibberish to clouds will not save you. Science will save you if you let it. Otherwise, your skies will be forever gray. The oceans will rise, and the women who live in the sea will die. You are a slave. This is the grand question, plainly stated so that you can understand. Do you want to be a slave to ignorance? Do not fall for damnable doctrines and the cruel massacres of the elite. Only in this country can a person be proud of not being good at math or science. You bring about the destruction of our very race by not noting nature around you. The dinosaurs were killed by men out of fear, and that very ignorance will kill us all. American ingenuity damns us all. American industry will do what it always does, make a few men very rich and a lot of men very sick. Those are the only outcomes. So if you're not rich, trust me, you'll be sick soon enough. My teachings will ground you. Go and spread the word by ordering copies of my book so that you may go on the incredible journey to the heart of all knowledge. Do not listen to the lies of institutions. They profit on the damnation of us all. Yours, Dr. Malcolm McIntosh. Additional copies of this publication can be found at your local booksellers. Interesting. He does have a point. Look where electricity has brought us. And we do live in an age where technology is replacing human interaction. Or perhaps a more intriguing idea is that we filter human interaction through technology. We are more connected than ever in human history, and you have seen firsthand the strengths and weaknesses of that scenario. This commentary is getting a little too serious for John's liking. Let's move on. And back at Tumbleweed, we need to visit the gun store because John needs a second sawed-off shotgun. Channel moderator and great friend Doc Skullhammer suggested doing a raid with dual sawed-offs, and regrettably, the Free Roam Friday Arthur doesn't have an offhand holster yet. Arthur has no intention of ever letting Micah out of jail, but he is working on the Master Hunter challenge specifically so he can score an offhand holster from the trappers. But in the meantime, we will use John for this scenario. Also, John really hates when I talk about Arthur during his videos. My apologies, John. Can't be helped. Personally, I prefer blue steel barrels and a brass frame on my shotguns. Also, John likes engravings. That has to be Abigail's influence. John likes his guns to be pretty. Cannot wait to give this a proper tryout. And we shall craft some incendiary buckshot. However, we need more moonshine. We'll need to visit a fence. Really wish there was a fence in New Austin, perhaps at Thieves Landing or even in Blackwater. But first, let's try out a new horse. We want an Overo American paint. Steve. Got some stable space. 
However, John, much like Arthur, prefers females, so we need to exit reload until one becomes available. And later that night, John finally found a female. Let's get a mohawk on her and call her Super Antonio. I like naming horses Super Antonio because it's a really subtle way to watermark the video. Also, free advertising from Rockstar. Thanks, Rockstar. Moving on. Safe travel. Remember to rest that horse sometimes. <laughs> There, girl. Come on. And back at the road's fence. Come on. As a sign of Well, long time no see, stranger. <laughs> oh, look, we unlocked the high roller. We'll get that later. We shall stock up on fire bottles and moonshine for incendiaries. Been a minute. Sift through. See what you like. Don't you tell no one, you hear? There is some complimentary chewing tobacco around the corner. Not a word to anyone, alright? And we have some complimentary cocaine gum over at this table. Let's go, girl. And now we craft. I like incendiary buckshot because it's a one-shot kill anywhere you hit someone. You could shoot an NPC in the foot and he'll still burst into flames. John could have used this in Undead Nightmare. Also, really like this Grey Overo's coat. Reminds me of the Piebald Tobiano, but this one is grey and white. Let's get back to New Austin. You're fine, lady. <laughs> And we will dual wield our twin sawed offs with incendiaries at a raid on Solomon's Folly because John needs the cash. Also, we shall make a save here. I highly recommend making a save before doing something foolhardy. Would that this feature were available in real life. Load up on health items and don't forget the horse. Good girl. And here we go. The good news is we can rely on the auto-targeting and conserve Deadeye with incendiaries. The bad news is shotguns are notoriously close range. And let's not forget our hat. John's gonna rush in there. He still has those undead nightmare reflexes currently. Also, this is so much easier with a Lancaster.
Really wanted to save the horse here. Easy to take them both out with incendiaries. There you go. And that was kind of fun. However, John is glad they were not zombies. You're a good filly. John is a mess and the poor horse is completely freaked out. Safe to say American paints are not war horses. We'll see how she does at hunting. As for now, she really needs to be calmed and she needs a sugar cube and John needs his hat. Relax. Check downstairs for a seemingly endless supply of cash. Also, miscellaneous supplies that we don't really need, but John will take nonetheless. Right here, girl. Don't forget the chimney. And here is our location, Solomon's Folly. Look at all of those X's. John's personal post-game ATM, northwest of Benedict Point. And John feels bad about this Del Lobo horse, who has glitched out. Easy. There, there. Easy. We're fine, ain't we? Oh, hey. Easy now. Okay, okay. Relax. <laughs> she needs a sugar cube as well. Hungry girl. <laughs> Let's move on, and let's take a moment to appreciate that lovely new Austin moon. Also, speaking of Benedict Point, we can explore a bit. Loads of supplies in here. Again, John doesn't need them, but he will take them. Wish we could sleep in these beds.
And here is our location. Nothing in the horse stalls. Howdy, friend! All right. And wow, somebody's here. John got scared. He still has those undead nightmare reflexes. And we might as well say hello to these fine folk who are waiting for a train that will never arrive. Can't be no I ain't causing trouble. Anyway, I hope you're okay there. Don't you worry about me. You sure do stick out in the crowd looking like that. Hey there. Hello. I see you, friend. I'll help you out. Also note, post office and tickets. Of course we cannot travel from here, however, I think at some point the game developers must have considered it. Perhaps we could take a train to Mexico from here. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Consider joining the channel and becoming a member for deputy badges by your name, custom emoticons in the premiere chats, end credits in every video, and daily members-only community posts featuring my random musings on life, TV and movie reviews, and exclusive photos. I hope you enjoyed watching this commentary as much as I enjoyed making it. John really enjoyed Mexico and zombie fighting, however he is so much happier to be back home with the decent horse controls and these gorgeous Red Dead Redemption 2 graphics. On Mondays, we Marston. I'll see you in part 20. I'm Super Antonio. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your views. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell for daily Red Dead Redemption 2 content, and we shall meet again. Further on down the trail. There. That's quite a scratch you got there.